much. Thank you for being here. These readings are taken from a book I wrote that was based on my teenage diary. This is an apology. <laughs> <laughs> and the beautiful films you see behind me of Molly Cliff Hilt's paintings, A Woman Who Paints to My Music, were created by Jack McKenna. If I turn around, I'll keep staring. He appears to have been crucified on some popsicle sticks. His mottled green and gold surface reminds us of fish scales. His paddle-shaped toes fan out like a tail. It is a singularly gruesome crucifix. We call it Fish Jesus. The first time I saw it, I thought it was funny. It's less funny at night when you're alone. And even less funny tonight because next to me is a bag of horrible donuts one of the painters left for me as a joke. They look just like fish Jesus. <laughs> Oblong, greenish gold and bloody with jelly, coconut maggots swarm over them. I really don't want to look at them anymore, but throwing them away would mean touching them, and I don't want to do that either. <laughs> so me and fish Jesus and the donuts all lean against the wall watching Christmas lights blink. It isn't Christmas, but these were the only working lights left in this empty apartment when its old man died. All we know about him is that he used to live here in Providence, and now he's dead. His body and most of his belongings carted away, but somehow he still pays his electric bill. Someone does anyway, and it isn't me or any of the other people I've seen use his electricity. I also know where he hid his key, under the mat. Napoleon was a brilliant tactician. And tonight, I need a place to stay, so I park myself under a sad crucifix and watch tiny blue, green, red, and orange bulbs blink on and off. Insomniacs like to waste time. I gotta get rid of these fucking donuts. <laughs> They're making me sick and they aren't going to get any prettier. Maybe I'll leave them here on the floor for the animal. We don't know what the animal is, only that it gets in sometimes and eats cornflakes out of the cabinet. Which is fine, because I didn't like the look of those dead guy cornflakes anyway. Once, a painter actually took the animal to the face. It leapt out of the apartment and jumped on his head when he opened the door. This is the closest encounter any of us have had with it. Unfortunately, it was the middle of the night and the stairwell was too dark for him to get a good look at the animal. It just knocked him backwards down the stairs and took off. He was thrilled. <laughs> Did it make a noise, I asked him? Was it furry? Did it smell weird? <laughs> he couldn't remember much. He was falling downstairs at the time. <laughs> Happily falling, having taken a wild animal to the face, but too distracted by gravity to pay attention to much else. In retrospect, he figured it had been furry and was about the size of a watermelon. This was relevant information, as we had had a kind of meeting on the subject once, the gaggle of musicians and painters who used this apartment when they had nowhere else to go. The animal hadn't yet gone for the cornflakes. It had only shuffled around the apartment in the dark, which was a little spooky, and it led to murmurings of ghosts walking around at night. The mystery was partially solved when the ghost turned out to be a furry, watermelon-sized face jumper that likes cornflakes and is good at hiding. <laughs> We now have tremendous affection for the animal, which is easy because it never shows itself. It politely devours whatever it can find and then takes off. We all act like it's a magic bear. 
but the best thing it could be really is a raccoon, and it's probably just a cat. When I give people directions to this place, I always mention the animal, though, in case it jumps on their face. I wish it were here right now. Napoleon took his bed with him when he left, so when you stay here, you sleep on the floor, and the floor feels extra hard tonight. Extra hard is extra lonely for some reason. Like you're being punished for something you probably did, but don't remember doing. Describes itself. 